Welcome to the madhouse. <laughs> It's time to get your fucking horror on, live from their dumpy little studio in beautiful Norwalk, California. It's the Mindless Horror Podcast with Sammy and Anthony. Uh, what is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Mindless Horror Podcast, Mohawk Edition. Long hair edition. <laughs> one uh, of us needs a haircut and the other one got the haircut. Yeah, the Mohawk, too. Rocking the Mohawk. Yeah, I've been like getting... Sure. I've been getting I've been getting jokes of Mr. T <laughs> the Undertaker at one point. Um Yeah. We'll see how this goes. I like it so far. I like it so far. It's bold. Gotta let it grow out. And I shaved, yes, baby face. Yeah. Mustache is gone, beard is gone. How long was I growing the beard out for? Since like I don't know. Haunt season, I think. Haunt season, yeah. Because I remember I, I shaved before haunt season or during haunt season, and then I just let it grow out from there. Yeah, I've been growing mine too for a pretty good while now. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> Clearly. Clearly. Right there, you get the little bit of shadow right there. It's good. Yeah. How you been, man? Oh, you know how it is. It's uh, another day, another day in paradise, right? You're trying to make it through. Another day in this epidemic. Yep, just trying to make it to, uh, I guess now, May 15th. <sighs> it's going to get extended again, watch. Well, you know, I'm just really hoping um, it doesn't. Everyone stay inside <laughs> wash your hands, please. Here's some news that not a lot of people are, you know, not a lot of the media are covering. But I guess like a 90-year-old guy or somebody, like, recovered from the, from the virus. Wow, that, that's sick. Yeah, I mean, I guess, I mean, because everybody kept saying, like, it, it, you know, it is a burden on, on people who are, like, 65 and older. And a 90-year-old guy recovered from it. So. That's good. The news you don't hear, they want you to just freak out. That's how the media is putting it. Yeah, if you guys want to watch good news, watch some good news. John Krasinski, uh, he's putting that on every week, it looks like, on YouTube. Is it, a like, a news thing? Like, he gives, or... Yeah, he's just covering, like, good things that have been happening in the world. Still but, waiting for yeah, a quiet place, too. That'd be a lot better. That'd be nice if we get a quiet place, too. But that means I have to watch a quiet place one, and I have to put my fears aside and watch it. I thought you watched it. No, I don't I don't want to watch it because it's so quiet. It's not even that bad. <laughs> it's just gonna, I'm going to literally be like this the entire movie. Listen. After this podcast, go on Vudu and watch it. I gotta do some other things. No, you're gonna watch Quiet Place. I gotta do some reading of uh, someone's work and do some writing. Okay, while you're writing, put on Quiet Place. <laughs> okay, maybe when I'm writing. Because that thing that you're writing is not due till Tuesday. Yeah. So you got some time on it. <laughs> I do have time. So, um, yeah. But also, gonna... um, this, uh, this episode is not sponsored by Mountain Dew Baja Blast, but... But I wish it was. <laughs> I, it I do wish it was. Because I can use some Baja Blast. Mountain Dew, if you're watching, give me some Baja Blast, please. Please. Send I want some. some. I Gary want some, was so. telling me, like, two years ago or something like that, him and his roommate cleared the Walmart of Baja Blast. That's awesome. So they probably had, like, boxes stacked in their freaking... They bought, like, 35 or something like that. That's awesome. Packs. That and sounds like something I would do. A year and a half. Yes, yeah, yeah, so that does sound like something you would do. That's some stupid money I would spend. <laughs> I don't know. When, Trump's, when Daddy Trump's um, stimulus package comes through, I may see cause... someone at Walmart with 36 packs. Of... Everybody's going for water. Here's you over here going for fucking... Uh... Baja Blast. Baja Blast, yeah. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. Yeah. Um, so today we're going to talk about uh, some things that were on the agenda for Nights of Horror, but it had to get postponed. But replacing that, I'm not going to fully announce it yet because I don't feel it's the time yet. We're still doing writing on this on this thing that we're working on, but it's going to be good. Um, and then good. we'll talk about... 
Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait to really share it. We're really putting like a high production on the, like on this. You know, we're going to go all out with this one. And if this does good, I already have plans to do some other stuff. So that will be fun. And then we're going to talk about a uh, new Knights of War schedule regarding, you know, what we're doing as far as what we're working on right now. Just so I can still give out quality content every week, but have time to work on this as well. Um, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about Resident Evil 3 Remastered because I beat that shit the first night it came out. Yeah, and I know nothing about it, so this is going to be a great time. It's going to be a great real, time. I have a ton of input, ton of input on it. Yeah. Um, so first thing we're going to talk about, uh, this month we were going to originally start production on uh, Twisted Tales um, with our first episode going to be um, about the character that was going to, uh, you know, be around for season one, which was Twisty the Clown. Um, Twisty. Yes. And uh, you, we were going to do two episodes. We were going to film back-to-back uh, on this in April and hopefully have them out by October. We were going to put a ton of production value into that as well as far as uh, set designs, uh, costuming, actors, and, um, you know, all in all editing and stuff. So we were going to, we, you know, we were going to film that this month and then the whole pandemic happened and, um, it's been on, it's put on hold. So we, we, as of right now, don't know when we'll get to get back, uh, to production meetings. Uh, cause I know we're going to have to do one last production, maybe two more production meetings. Um, okay. one for, for, uh, the, um, the second episode and, one for an overall production meeting before we get started filming. So before we were going to film, we would have to do two more production meetings, and then we were going to start filming. But due to the pandemic, we have put this project on hold because uh, we have to go on location to film stuff. We have to, we're going to film with actors. We're going to have a crew and everything. So the project is on hold right now. Uh, so I was talking to the... Um, the you know the main actor who's going to be playing Twisty uh, last night. Uh, we were just kind of texting and, and and you know bullshitting and stuff. But uh, we were now we're looking probably depending how long this takes, we're looking at maybe late twenty twenty or early twenty twenty one now for this project. But yeah, just because of schedules, it's going to be a lot of difficult. Yeah, I mean with this pandemic, we're on a day to day. You know, I mean, every day something new happens, that something changes. Um, if you're in the Los Angeles County, uh, social distancing and quarantine just extended to May 15th now. So that's kind of a bummer to, you know, put a, a hold on things. But, I mean, it is what it is. But to keep us busy and to replace that during this time, uh, I came up with an idea to do a docu-series which I'm not going to fully announce what it is yet. I'll just give you like the minor details of what me and Sammy are doing right now and, and how we're preparing for this and, and how much you know time and effort is going into putting this together. But basically, uh, me and Sammy are in the writing phase right now of, of writing the scripts out for this docuseries. Um, and we're doing a ton of research, spending a lot of time on it to kind of get a hold of things. A lot of the things... Uh, that we're doing in here since writing scripts one and two, I had never known. So it's a lot of new knowledge to me and a lot of new, uh, learning process for me, uh, getting to see, see a lot of, a lot of these things and come to life and stuff. But I, I'm really excited for this project. I think it's going to be a good kind of, uh, replacement for now until we get twisted tales up and going. Um, and then I brought you on board. Uh, I think the first night I, I started writing, I told you, like, I had this idea, I want to do this idea, and I want to put a ton of production into it. Um, we're going to have guests on it to put an in input yeah. every episode, and um, we're going to have an actual narrator, not me or Sammy. It's going to be an actual narrator going to be narrating the whole show, which is really cool. And in between uh, each uh, episode, you'll have uh, a lot of our friends that we've asked to come on the show to talk about cer uh, certain subjects um, – give their input and and their opinions about about these 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 subjects which i'm very excited for um it's been a ton of fun like i said writing so far i am writing episode two right now i know sammy's writing episode three and yeah. um we're both going to be directing and and producing this project so 
You know, I mean, we're gonna we're gonna try to put as much effort and dedication as we can. I think this is probably some one of the biggest things we've ever worked on. Yeah, no, definitely. This is gonna be big because I'm thinking we're gonna end up with I don't know how many episodes. Considering I'm looking at seven right now. Seven. I did the math um, because. Yeah, I mean it makes sense because based upon the way we're starting. From where we're starting till till today, yeah. you know, I mean, it's like I'm I'm looking at seven episodes. It's gonna be a seven episode uh, mini docu series, and if this does yeah. good, uh, we're, I have plans to do something else um, in relation to this. So, um, I mean, documentaries to me have always been um, fascinating, interesting. I've always loved watching documentaries about things, people, um, places. Uh, histories whatever it was i mean i always loved watching documentaries so yeah ancient aliens is the best right dude i watch it with my dad all the time it's great some of the stuff you hear on that is just like maybe that is true yeah uh, maybe I think, I know, as soon as as soon as i saw your announcement about it i was like 2 a.m i'm like i'm gonna shoot my shot see what he's doing texting you at like two in the morning like a normal day just, just random 2 a.m conversations no, and, and um, I was going to – even though I announced it, I was still going to talk to you about it regardless about this is what yeah. was happening next on the channel because that's something that we do regardless about what we announce or anything. We always talk about it yeah. and go further on it. And then last night, me and you made a decision uh, with the narrator, and we were both like on the same mindset about it because you know, it's easy for us to narrate something, but it's better to get someone who's got more practice and more – experience with it yeah because you. then you end up with uh plague productions yeah plague productions and uh uh if you guys watch that ted doherty podcast the way sammy pronounced plague productions was like if he had a mini stroke uh, <laughs> that's why yeah. we're, we're saying that but i mean you'll you'll it, it will honestly i feel like it would take a lot longer for us to record each one just due to like stuttering messing up or something and with the person we're bringing on who has I, I, this is a hint. He has done stuff for us in the past. Um, so if you guys want to be Mr. Detective and try to figure it out, go for it. But <laughs> um, Put that Batman suit on and go to work. Put the cow on and, yeah, go great, world's greatest detective. But I think with this person that we're bringing on, um, this person is going to deliver us some good stuff. We've already been talking about uh, putting together a schedule um, based around – uh, you know, when he's available and, and, um, when it's, when it's time to start filming stuff. So I am very excited to bring this person on. On top of that, all the, the people who, uh, we asked to, to come out in this project have been open arms and they are so down to do it. I don't think there's been a lot of these done, but I don't think there's been one done by a small YouTuber. Yeah. I mean, other than the art of horror that, um, our, our friend Adam did, and we, we have it on our channel now. It was actually a huge inspiration from that one little documentary that kind of inspired this new docuseries. So what I wanted to do with this docuseries is I wanted to expand more than one episode. You know, I, I can easily fit all this in one video and, and narrow it down a lot, or I can turn it into a series where week after week it's something different. You know what I mean? No, definitely, and I think we're both on the same page of we can totally just skim the surface and just do it one, maybe two episodes, considering it's, we're only covering a short amount of time, but we're covering a long amount of time yeah. at the same time, you know what I mean? So I think we could obviously, yeah, just do it in one or two episodes, but if we really spend that time, you know, create 15, 20-minute episodes that are good and dive in deep into, these, into the topic and really allow for more people to, you know, put their opinions on there and then put an input out there, it's going to be a lot better. Um, and it'll have a larger scope, you know. Yeah, um, it might even be longer know. than 15, 20 minutes, too, because I'm looking at wanting to make full-on episodes, like maybe anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour, depending yeah, on depending, depending yeah, on yeah. what we cover and, and how much info we can get in. I mean, each, each topic we're going to be talking about, we're going to have a, a list of subtopics that cover those topics, so... Um, I'm, it's really hard to talk about this without giving away too much, but I, I'm trying my best to kind of keep it as secretive as possible. I mean, 
only a handful of people know who are going to be involved with the project. Um, of course, all of our guests know, and and uh, our narrator knows, Sammy knows. Look at that. I got food delivered today mid-podcast. Look how beautiful it is. Mid-podcast. Awesome. Um, yeah. There's Celine. Hi, Celine. Hi. How you doing? Good. That's good. Stay safe. You too. Um, but I think we're going to have a lot of fun doing this. It's going to take a lot of time and effort. There's no – we don't have a, a, an estimated data delivery yet. Right now we are still in pre-production, writing everything and, and everything like that. We're aiming to start production at the end of this month, uh, but depending how fast we can get these scripts out and, and making sense and, and doing everything, um, the faster we could start production. We have a set date and we have um, you know deadlines for every script to do, and it's, it's making it a lot easier for you know I'm writing one, you're writing one because that puts us a little bit ahead. Like, I'm writing episode two right now. You're writing episode three. The deadline for two is tomorrow, and the deadline for three is Tuesday. So <laughs> it's given us not only just time and re to do our research and stuff, but it, it gives us, you know, a little breathing room from there. So right after two, I can go straight to four, you know, while you're doing three. And when you're done with three, you can go straight to five, you know, and so on and so forth. Yeah. So right after I'm done with two, I'm just going to start doing my research for four. Uh, you'll start – you'll finish three up, start your research for five. And then I'll do six and then seven. Um, but the way we're going to uh, organize these is, uh, you know, I mean, we could easily just put written by, you know, so-and-so and so. So I think it's just equal for us to put written by both of us since we're both putting in time and research for each episode. Yeah, so. Um, and then, of course, directed by it would be by me and yeah, you. Yeah, and those. obviously, right, I edit what you edit. So. Yeah, it's going to be... It's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. Um, it's gonna go like I said. There's gonna be a lot of uh, time and effort put into this uh, project because since this this whole epidemic is going, we have more time on our hands than we usually do. Uh, it's gonna take a lot of time. Um, I'm already talking with a lot of the guests on on potential um, days to record. It, it's gonna be fun because what what this is gonna be an interesting an interesting thing to do which is like we're gonna have to direct our guests through like a uh, kind of through like a skype call you know what i mean like this is gonna be interesting from what i'm looking at it right now is we're gonna have them because i want this to be the best quality ever have each of our guests kind of set up their own kind of setup as to how they feel comfortable with um, yeah. and what they think is the best shots and stuff and then uh just conduct the interview over um, over Skype, but have them record on their camera with their audio and their lighting and everything. That way, we get the best production value possible. No, um, definitely. I think that's a great idea to do it that way. Yeah. So that everyone's, you know, so that we're getting instead of Skyping, getting the internet shot, we're getting yeah, the actual, the film actual shot. yeah, film shot. Um, yeah. so I I think it's gonna be it's gonna be fun. Uh, it, yes. Uh, the beginning. Uh, it's not actually as stressful as I thought it was going to be because I'm actually learning a lot I didn't know for these first two episodes that we're doing, especially because that's like the early stages of what we're covering. I had never, you know, ever like there's a lot of stuff I didn't know, and it's it's really uh, expanding my knowledge on the subject. So I, I, really... I agree. I'm like, the time it's kept giving me a better understanding of how it plays out. Yeah, definitely, and and how it's you know just progressed from there which i'm very excited so um yeah i think you got a pretty solid right now your script is pretty solid w of what you're working on as far as where you are in things and and you got a, you got a pretty solid one um and i got like the start of that so i mean I i'm very excited to see where this goes i don't want to give away too much we have a lot of guests um and I don't think we're going to launch the, the first episode until at least we have three or four for sure done and edited. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Because I want to make it a weekly series. And if we have three or four ahead of us, then we can uh, you know continue editing the other ones while we release more. And by the time we're like on episode four, then we'll have the rest of the series done. And everything will just be released. And if you guys like this series, uh, let us know. 
um, because we, like I said, I have plans to do other stuff related to this kind of subject um, and touch on certain things within this subject. So I, uh, I definitely want to keep these going, especially if we're going to be in this lockdown for as, as long as we are right now and it, and it expands more. This will give me more opportunities to put aside, you know, other things and really focus on stuff like this. Because I don't think I've ever really put as much time and effort as I'm going to in this in this in this docu series, which I'm really excited for. No, definitely. I, I think it's allowed both of us to play creative hand in it. Yeah. Um, and really expand what we normally do. Because obviously, most of the time, it's just we're going to shoot a podcast. We're going to talk about the events. Mm-hmm. Um, Maybe we'll do something a little different every now and then, or you know, working on like twisted towels or something. But like, this is like very much like, hey, we've been doing this for a good while. Let now let's switch gears and try something different. Yeah, and see, you know, how how well we do. Especially since me um, wanting to be a filmmaker, this is a great opportunity to kind of show what I can do Definitely. as a filmmaker, and and this is a great opportunity for us as a team to put out something that listen. Yeah, we love going to these events. We love covering all these things, but this is what we f- truly feel about horror. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I mean, this is this is our take on what this is, and this is how we feel about the subject. This is how passionate we are about the thing. We're not just doing this to get a paycheck or or go to all these events for free, which of course is always nice and stuff. But we're doing this because we truly have a love for this kind of thing, and we really want to just get the information out there for people who don't know. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, and what we do would have been very helpful for me, you know, some like fourteen months ago. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. But I mean, I'm glad we're doing it. At least it's better to do it now than later. You know what I mean? You're you're yeah. still as you as you still learn more and stuff. I'm hoping uh, I'm I'm hoping this is actually probably opening your horizons to seeing what a lot of this stuff was. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely is. So, with that being said, though, since we're gonna be putting a lot of time and effort on this the new nights of horse schedule is going to be changing um i know in the beginning of this pandemic we really were uploading like almost every day and and doing you know what we can so we we came up with a new schedule that we felt was fair around um you know what we're working on and the future of of the where this docuseries is going so new nights of horse schedule will be wednesdays and fridays so every friday we'll release a new podcast and every wednesday we'll need we'll release a new original video um i'll take the time to like film that or if i got to get with sammy to film that we will but for sure the podcast me and sammy will be doing it and on the podcast this is where you'll hear the first um updates on the new docuseries that we're working on so um i'm assuming the next time we record another podcast uh We'll be pretty either almost done with the writing phase or, you know, halfway there. So we'll keep updating you on the podcast as to where we are with this docuseries. That way you stay informed and you stay aware as to where production is on this. Um, uh, The only exception I'm going to make outside of the Wednesday, Friday uh, schedule is if Tormented puts up something. As you guys know, we've been partnered with them for uh, some time now, for about a month, and uh, I've been covering a lot of their content and and breaking down a lot of stuff. So if Tormented puts out a new podcast, or if they put out a new uh, character announcement or, or anything related to Tormented, I will hop on the video and, and do that and release it whenever I feel fit. Um, so that's the only exception for uh, videos. However, if you guys want, uh, and this is a shameless plug, if you guys want a week-long uh uh, content every week. Uh, we have a gaming channel, uh, or at least I do. With he's got appearances every now and then. But uh, me, Kevin, and Ruth started a gaming channel. Uh, if you don't know who Kevin and Ruth are, uh, Ruth has been on our show uh, numerous times. Uh, of course, with Character Appreciation Month, she was on the first episode with Jackie and Bree from Fractured Compass, and she was on. Her and Kevin were on Shoot the Shit. Uh, what was it like a couple months ago? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, those two right there, Kevin and Ruth. We started a gaming channel where we have a ton of fun, and um, we just get mad at games or get frustrated with games or take games serious or just joke around. Uh, yeah. We got some pretty freaking funny content, I think, out there, and I, you guys should definitely go check it out and subscribe uh, if you guys want more uh, content as far as my end because those videos are really easy to uh 
edit and put together. I know we just released a uh, Uno Let's Play today as of this recording. Um, and we got more on the way, so do that. But speaking of video games, uh, since this is horror-related, and uh, I pulled an all-nighter beating it because why not? Uh, Is it Animal Crossing? Fuck that game. (laughs) Um, Resident Evil 3 Remastered had came out um, about a week ago, or two weeks ago. Um, And it is pretty good, I will say this. So if you guys aren't familiar with Resident Evil Remastered, or Resident Evil in general... Three, yeah. I mean, just in general, but Resident Evil is, of course, about a, a corporation called the Umbrella Corporation who releases a virus to Raccoon City in the beginning, and it turns these people into like zombies or weird creatures or stuff like that. Yeah. And um, it's very intense horror game, third-person horror game, except for Resident Evil Seven, which actually was a first-person horror game. Which I think that's with Resident Evil 7's uh, game engine, the way it looked and everything, is what spawned a lot of these remasters because a lot of people loved the way that that game was, my, myself yeah. included. They started doing uh, Resident Evil. They did remastered Resident Evil Two last year. Resident Evil Three just came out. And so I could see the future of uh, them remastering all the Resident Evil games uh, with the Resident Evil 7 engine until they make a new Resident Evil game, uh, which would be 8 in the series. Um, I have yet to play Resident Evil. It's like a new multiplayer game. I think it's called Resistance. Um, I have yet to play that, but uh, Resident Evil 3 was very fun. I will say this. Fucking, what's his name? Uh, Forget it. Genesis, no. What is his name? I forget the fucking creature's name. Oh my god, how do I how do I forget his fucking name? <laughs> he frustrated me. I forget his name. Oh my god. It's like you have a Nemesis. Nemesis is his name. Oh, Nemesis. Nemesis. Yes, Nemesis is the main villain for Resident Evil 3 and he's a fucking bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, you fight him throughout the entire game. You play as uh, Jill Valentine, and uh, you go swap back and forth between her and Carlos, uh, who are the two main characters of the game. For those of you guys who don't know, this is actually a prequel slash sequel um, because it takes place be- uh, before I think Resident Evil Two, and after it's, it's supposed to be after Resident Evil One, but it takes place before Resident Evil Two. Um, oh, that's and then I think the ending goes forward after Resident Evil 2. So it's like a pre-sequel in a way. It's a kind of confusing timeline with this one. But it all kind of ties in. Um, Because you do see a lot of throwbacks and a lot of how things got set up for Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil 3. So, um, no, I think they beautifully remastered these games, though. Um, They made them so much better. I've watched side-by-side comparisons of how these games looked back in the day compared to now. And the graphics updated on this is just beautiful, especially putting it on the Resident Evil 7 engine. Um, is a is a is an amazing choice, and I and I loved uh, every minute of this game. Uh, I think I I think the only part I struggled with was there's a scene where you have to turn on the power station, and it's filled with spiders. <laughs> and I hate <laughs> spiders. I hate them to an ex- I hate them so much. I hate spiders. I don't like the way they look, especially. And that was a video game. And the only way I got through that scene was because I had a. What I did was that night I actually live streamed for about an hour on yeah. YouTube. With the videos on YouTube right now, and I actually had to keep my headphones off because if I heard the noise, it would have freaked me out even more. So, just getting through that scene was a bitch, but I got through it, and if I'm I glad that you was. A tarantula, what would you do? What? If I bought you a tarantula, I would slap. I would slap you. It's just that simple. And then I tell you to get the fuck out of my house with that thing. But you don't have that kind of you don't have that kind of money to buy that, so. I don't know. I don't know how much they are. <laughs> They're probably expensive. Not in your budget. <laughs> it's not in your budget. <laughs> but uh, nonetheless, I'm glad that was the only scene that had those. But Nemesis comes throughout the game from the very beginning. Like he's the first fucking enemy you encounter. The very first enemy you encounter in that game. To the very end where you have to fight him in the giant boss scene. And he's a fucking... He's annoying. He just does not die. And it's annoying. Because <laughs> fighting him is, is just a pain in the ass. And I... And, oh, God. I was just getting frustrated every time I had to fight him. Um, and when you finally... Spoilers. But if when you finally kill him at the end, it was just such a relief. It really was. 
Um, so I would assume next on the list for Resident Evil is Resident Evil 4 Remastered. Uh, and it looks like we're getting them every year now, where last year we got Resident Evil 2, and then this year we got Resident Evil 3. So I'm assuming next year we'll probably get Resident Evil 4. Unless... The, uh, my only my only thing is I think they're doing this just so they can have time to make Resident Evil 8 if they are working on Resident Evil 8. So. Yeah, I mean, but it's, it, they still have to build a whole new game basically Pretty much. every time they do this. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, it is just a major update on graphics. Um, they basically take the old game and just update everything as far as with next-gen graphics, which looks beautiful. And, and they do a full remaster of the game. Um, and I like when I like when companies do that with old games to remaster it because, you know, I mean, it is, you know, we're in a day and age where, like, if the graphics aren't good, not a lot of people will play it, you know? Yeah. And, and, and graphics do make a huge difference uh, now than they did before. I mean, before, we thought those graphics were great, and now we're in a day and age where, like, shit, it's almost looking realistic as hell. Yeah, definitely. And, and I think with, with a lot of companies coming out and doing a lot of remasters of games... And, <laughs> And, and everything. I think it's an awesome experience because uh, one of my favorite games campaign actually at the end of this month, well it's already on available on PlayStation, but uh, Modern Warfare 2 is getting a full uh, a full remaster for the campaign and that was one of my favorite campaigns of all time. So I, I am really looking forward to that. I already have it pre-ordered and I, I can't wait. So, But with Resident Evil 3 and Resident Evil 2, I've had such a good time playing those games. Um, and uh, the remastered version is just is beautiful. So I can't wait to see what the future of Resident Evil holds. Those games always get me sold. I love a good scary game. Um, horror games are just fun. Just don't put spiders in them. Only spiders. No. Which I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of a little scared to to finish Doom because I heard one of the main villains at the end is like a giant crab spider like looking creature, and I'm just like fuck. And that game's first person, so. You should play it in VR. If they make VR. Oh, God. I would fucking freak the fuck out. <laughs> I've watched, I watch a lot of VR fucking channels, and it's just hilarious to me. But I, I know if I was in that same position, I would die. Yeah. It'd so, be funny, though. It would. It'd be good content. It'd be very good content. We just got to buy a VR. Yeah, it's going to be expensive. And find the space to uh, actually do it. <laughs> yeah, considering how small the office is. <laughs> yeah, considering how small it is. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so a quick recap, uh, Twisted Tales on hold until the whole pandemic finishes, so we don't know an exact date of when we'll start, um, filming that, but it is going to be coming out regardless. That is on our projects list, and uh, we're doing it. It's just going to take a little bit longer than it usually. I waited fucking two years for just to get the thing off the table, and <laughs> I could wait a little bit longer if I have to. Yeah. Uh, production on our docu-series has started. We're in the pre-production phase right now. We're writing all the scripts, and we got a narrator. We got guests, and a uh, ton of production is going to go behind this, so we're excited. There's a new Knights of Horror schedule due to the docu-series because we really want to focus on the docu-series to make it as best as we can, uh, which is Wednesday, Friday, original video on Wednesday, and podcast on Friday. Uh, tormented uh, exception because they usually drop stuff on different uh, days. So whenever they drop stuff like the the following night, I will um, cover it. And then I usually wait a day so people can actually check it out. And then that second day, I'll post it up. Um, and then we did a, a little Mad Slash Games um, plug. shameless plug. Uh, definitely go subscribe to my other gaming channel if you want to see some funny gaming videos with all of us. Uh, and we talked a little bit about Resident Evil 3 Remastered and how we feel about remastered games in general. So, yeah, guys, that was going to do it for our podcast. Uh, I don't know when we'll have another guest on the show. Um, the Scott Ditterman one was a, a huge success. I really enjoyed doing that live podcast. That, that was something new for both of us. And um, definitely a lot of learning to do, but I feel we did a good job for our first time. Um so maybe we'll do another one of those pretty soon. I don't know. But uh, if you guys like to see another live podcast, leave it down in the comments below. Um, we have a merch shop if you guys have a couple extra bucks. I know times are tough right now. But if you guys do have a couple extra bucks, uh, check out our merch shop. We have a couple different t-shirts. Um, uh, we have some sweaters. We have some tank tops, women's t-shirts, long sleeve t-shirts, stickers. Stickers. We have them. Um, 
And of course, uh, follow us on social media at the Knights of Horror on Instagram and at Knights of Horror on Twitter. Be sure to subscribe and hit that bell notification to be aware every time we put up a new video. Sammy, you have anything else to say before we log off? Yeah, uh, wash your hands, stay inside, stay safe, uh, and keep watching because you'll never know what's coming next. Exactly. Save Halloween, stay quarantined, man. We want to go to Midsummer Scream this year. <laughs> I do. I really want to go. I do. I want haunt season to happen this year. <laughs> I want all three days of Midsummer. Yes. I want them now. And I want all fucking two and a half months of freaking haunt season because that's what I live for. Yes. So, all right, everybody. Stay safe. Have a good time. Peace. Party hardy. We'll see you next time. <laughs>